Yes, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you ask most people, do they love God? They will emphatically say yes. Who wants to be accused of not loving God? Why though? Is there a penalty for not loving God? We are living in a world where people want to feel like they are doing good. You know, people are comfortable thinking that living a moral life is enough. People are comfortable thinking being a law-abiding citizen is enough. But there's higher laws to obey. Higher laws than the laws of this land that we have to obey. Does a man that walks away from his family, does he love them? A man that does not take care of his kid, is that proof that he loves him? All right, what if he goes out of his way to find that kid, love him and be a part of his life? Would that mean, would that count that he loves that kid? See, so there are things that you can do to prove that someone, that you love somebody. There are things that are more powerful than words. Actions do speak louder than words. Your words mean nothing if your actions, if your behavior are contrary to your own words. Can a person say they love God while living in sin? Come on now, that's a good one. They can say whatever they want. That's a good one. Whether they are a sinner that hasn't been saved yet or a backslider returning back to sin, my question today is can a sinner love God? What does God use to prove that you love him? Notice what I said. What does God use to prove to you that you love him? What matrix does he use? See, God already knows your heart. He knows whether you love him or not. Did you know that God has a language that speaks love? Because the spoken words, I love you, God, could mean nothing. What is that language? What is that? What is God's love language? Uh huh. Right. Did you know Abraham killed a bunch of giants for God? Did you know Abraham broke, shattered, and destroyed idols like this one right here? Abraham destroyed all of Terah's idols, and then he blamed it on the idol. He funny. He told his father it was the big idol that broke the other idol. He took the bat and he put it in the big idol's hand and said he did it. His father got so mad at him. He sought to have him killed. Abraham didn't waver because he knows God hates idolatry. Abraham was God's dude. That was his that was his friend. That was his homie. So God told Abraham, hey, you my homie. I give you something for all that you've done for me. God gave him that son that he promised. You know the story. God knew Abraham loved his son. His son was not from sin. So I have a question. Why did God order him to destroy his own son. If I was Abraham, the first thing that came to my mind is, God, hold on. I don't see anybody else killing their own kids. He ain't asking nobody else to do this. Abraham asked God for one thing. And that one thing he asked God for, the one thing he wanted God to do for him, he waited. God waited until his son was born. He waited until Abraham was deeply in love with him, and then he told him to sacrifice him. Kill him and burn him. As if killing him ain't enough. What would you do? If you was Abraham, what would you do? Yeah. Genesis 22, verse 2. And he said, take thy son, thine only son Isaac. Did you catch that? The only son Isaac. We know Ishmael was already born. Why did he say take your only son? Huh? That's a nugget right there. Whom thou lovest, God knows he loves him, get out of the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering. Burn him upon one of the mountains, which I will tell of thee. Isn't that just like God, not to tell you everything all at once? See, if God gave us all the details, we'd run off and leave him. That's how we humans are. So God gives us bits and pieces because God wants you to depend on him. God will let you lose your job. God will let you get laid off and not tell you about the one that he got lined up. Because you'll think you did it on your own. you think it's your own intellect. you think it's your own networking. And you won't give him the glory. So he doesn't tell you everything. He doesn't tell Abraham which mountain to go to. 
Just start moving, Abraham. Yes. First, start obeying. Obey first. See? Obeying is the first step. Why? Did God require the death of his son? His son didn't do anything wrong. I would have asked God to take me instead. I think every parent, almost every good parent would have said, let me sacrifice myself. Leave my kids alone, God. Yeah. But that wouldn't have been a sacrifice. See? A sacrifice, God knows exactly what you love. And that's what he wants. Why did God put a fruit in the middle of the earth and then tell Adam, hey Adam, obey me. I would have constructed a wall with barbed wire fence. I would have made that fence electric. I would have built a moat with electric eels all around it. I would have put stingrays in there. I would have kept, I would have put every creepy crawler around it to keep everybody away from it. This is how I would have proved to God that I love him. And in return, I would have had the whole world. Can you imagine that? I, in return, I would have had a daily fellowship with God. You got tempted with stupid stuff, just like some of us. Lust, pride, stupid stuff. Adam could have had the whole world, but stupid stuff. He could have had any fruit, but stupid stuff. He got tempted with stupid stuff. The Bible says, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. I thought faith is all we need. I thought all we needed to do was believe. Believe and receive. I thought that's all we had to do. So it doesn't matter if you say you love God. Can you prove it? Man, Can you crazy. prove you love God? Yeah. What does it mean today? In today's term. What does it mean today for Adam not to eat the fruit? That means don't call him back. Don't click on that link. That means you have to delete that voicemail. That means you have to tear up those tickets. You have to take the message of the Bible and you have to make it relevant today. Okay? So what is your fruit? Can you handle it being right in front of your face and you say no because I love God? Mm. What does kill your son mean to you today? God ain't telling nobody to sacrifice their kill today. I'm on YouTube so I have to put that disclaimer out there. What do you love the most that's not sin? What are you willing to sacrifice? Good. We talk ad nauseum about Abraham's faith. His obedience, his love for God. But what about Isaac's love? What about Isaac's trust? He had to lay there while a hitman has been sent out for him. Even though the hitman is his own father. There was a bounty on his head. Imagine being Isaac. You've done nothing wrong. And I have to be sacrificed? This is why Isaac's seed has been chosen. Because he and Abraham, they both proved they love God. How did they do it? Do you love God? Go ahead and prove it. Prove you love God. Prove it to yourself. Prove it to God. There's only one way to do that. Can a sinner love God? Can a backslider love God? Or not. He loves me. He loves me not. Y'all remember that? Y'all remember playing that? You'll never have to figure out if God loves you. Yes, he loves you. He didn't just say it, though. He did something to prove it. His actions proved it. His behavior proved it. What about you? That's good. Hey, what do you do when you want to show your family or your friends you love? Do you just say it? I don't want that. If you really love me, if you really truly love me, prove it. Show it to me. When I say, do you love God? My sincere question is, what I'm really trying to say is, can you keep his commandments? His commandments does not cause you grief. His yoke is not hard. His burden is not heavy. But what exactly is love? Well, the Bible says, well, this is love. This is the love of God that we, that we what? That we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. I heard there was a song called A Sinner's Prayer. Ah. Being a sinner should never be your end goal. Not for you. Raise your standard. The Bible says, now we know that God heareth not ah. sinners. I did right. But if, yeah. if any man be a worshiper of God and do with his will, him he heareth. Notice it says, and do his will. What is his will? Amen. 
the Bible says, if, what does the word if mean? Right? The word if means in the event that, or on the assumption that, or on condition that. So let's see how it works. Let's put those words, let's replace if with the meanings of the words. Let's try it. In the event that you love me. This is what God is saying. On the assumption that you love me. God is saying on the condition that you love me. I submit to you today that there's only one way God can comprehend that you love him. And that's if you love him. If you love him. God knows. He already knows there will be people out there that won't love him. He already knows there will be people that just say they love him. But the Bible says if you love me. Keep my commandments. I got a news flash for those that say it's not possible to keep the commandments. I have to interrupt you to ask you a question. Was Jesus the only one that kept all the commandments? There was in the days of Herod, in Luke chapter 1, verse 5, there was a day that, there was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest called Zacharias, of the course of Abia, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Verse number six, and they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. That's in your Bible. Go look. That's why I put every scripture on the slides so you can't say anything. Go look. That's in the Bible. What about the sinners that turn into a saint? Remember Paul? All right. Paul admits, he got, you got me. I persecuted the church. You got me dead to rights. You got me on that. But since I've been filled with the Holy Ghost, since I have been converted, since I met Jesus, since I've been baptized in his precious name, since I spent some days alone with him, the Bible says, touching righteousness, which is in the law, blameless. The devil lied when he told you you can't live a holy. The devil lied when he told you you can't live holy. You can live holy. You can obey God's laws. You can walk upright before him. You can keep the commandments. You can keep his ordinance. You know why you got to live holy? Because you can't serve two masters. I remember one time my mother told me to do something. My mother told me to get up. My father told me to sit down. How can I obey both of them? It was one time my father was at work. He told me to do something. My mother told me to do the complete 100% opposite. So I based my decision on who hits the hardest. Who gonna give me the worst whooping? I had to, I, I had to, I couldn't come up with any other plan. Cause I can't obey both of them. One telling me to do one thing, the other one, you cannot, man cannot serve two masters for either he will hate one, love the other, or he will hold to the one. That means he will keep one precious in his sight, and he'll despise the other one. You cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon is the greed demon. It's not just money. It's the demon that will drive you to love money, okay? It's the demon that makes you crave stuff. He'll make you kick and scratch and crawl to get more. He'll make you kick and scratch to get to the top. You know people like that at work? Okay, do you love God or do you love pleasing your flesh? The Bible says, he that hath keep, he that hath my, did I read that right? He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. Did you see that? And he that loveth me shall be loved by my father. Isn't that nice? And I will love him. When? After you keep his commandments. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. That's what I want. I want God to show himself to me. There's so much more God than we've seen. God has so much more of him. There's so much more revelation in him. There's so much more insight. God, manifest yourself to me. Little old me, show me you, God. I want to be closer to you, God. I want to see your face, God. I'm not asking for your hand, Lord. I want to see your face, Jesus. I want to commune with you, God. I want to spend time with you, Jesus. I want me and you to be friends, God. I want to see your face in peace, Jesus. Wrap your arms around me, God. Manifest yourself to me, Jesus. I want to be with you. Show me your glory, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Why? You, Why be a sinner when you can have a God Hallelujah. that will give you joy? Yes. When the wind is howling, when the thunder is rolling, Amen. God will give you. Thank when you, the you. devil is 
raging, when sickness is rocking your body, yes. God can give you joy. joy. Listen, happiness is based on what's happening. Right. But joy, joy. unspeakable joy, yes. when the world is on fire, when anxiety has taken root yes. Yes. and set up in your life, My it's God. all right. Because God will give me my peace. God, God. If your family walk off and leave you, it's yeah. all right. It's all right. That's right. If your husband won't take your calls anymore, well, it's all right. Well. If the doctors have some bad news, it's all right. Because yeah. I got something within my soul called yeah. peace. How can yeah. you sleep when there's tornadoes all around you? It's because yeah. I got peace. Thank Hallelujah. You. I would have cracked up a long time ago. Yeah. I would have lost it. But I kept my mind stayed. Oh, <laughs> I got perfect peace now, y'all. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Bless your name, Jesus. That's the benefits of a loving God. Loving He'll God. wrap his arms around you. I know he um, will. Imagine yeah. God. Imagine God telling you. Just imagine God telling you, yeah. everything will be all right. Come on now. Everything. I don't care what yeah, the doctors Lord. say. Imagine God telling yeah. you it is well. My goodness. Hallelujah. Who wouldn't serve a God like that? Why would you why would you miss an opportunity of a lifetime serving sin when you can serve the Creator? Yes, Lord. With God, you get a comforter. Some folk call him the Holy Ghost. God said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will manifest myself to you. He'll do well inside of you. Through heartache, through tribulation, through trouble, through despair. God will comfort you. He'll be right there. He'll give you a warm embrace in the midst of your sorrow. Anybody saved that would been driving down the street and you're just going through a thing and you said, God, just sit right here. Sit next to me, God. You don't have to give me anything. I just want to know that you're with me, God. I just want to know that you haven't walked off and left me. I just want to know that you hear my prayers. Because if you hear me, God, everything will be all right. I know that my best, your, my best interest, Lord Jesus, it's in your mind right oh now, God. God. But if you come and sit next to me, God, yeah. that alone will comfort me, Jesus. There is no comfort. I'm telling you, there's no comfort like the comfort of the power of the Holy Ghost. Who wouldn't serve a God like that? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I can't wait Hallelujah. to see him. I can't yeah. wait to hug him. Lord. I can't wait to wrap my arms around him. God will give you comfort even if you got a broken heart. He'll comfort you on bad days. Why would you choose sin? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Sin is a reproach. Sin is destructive. Sin destroys families. Sin conquers nations. Sin infects cultures. Sin brings consequences. It's not just the little sin. It's the small foxes that destroy the vine. Sin separates you from God. That's the word. That's the word. Who shall separate us? Ooh. We like to say this. We like to say this scripture, yeah. right? Ooh. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, yeah. or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? Notice that it didn't say sin. For I am persuaded yeah. that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. Do you notice it didn't say sin? Did y'all catch that? Nor height nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, but sin can. The wages of sin is still death. When did that change? The word separate, the word death means separate. That's what it means. When you die, you separate your spirit from your body. Yes. Sin separates you from God. Yes, that's the word. Before you try to figure out, does a sinner love God, why sin? You don't have to. You can live separate from sin. Yes, yes you can. Yes, you can. People are doing it right now. Sin is temporary. I want to remind you that there's a place where there is no sin. Will you be there? Uh -huh. Will you be miserable? Because you can't do the stuff that you're doing now. Because your desires won't work there. The pleasures of sin is for a season. Just a season. I would never encourage anybody to continue in any sin just to be comfortable. If you love Jesus, if you love him, depart from sin. Amen. Nevertheless, the foundation of God stands is sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone, everyone that nameth the name of Christ stay in sin. Oh, 
No, it says depart from iniquity. Depart. Walk away from it. Separate yourself from it. Prove to God that you love him. Not with your mouth. That's not the language he comprehends. Anyone can love anything, yes. but God recognizes obedience as love. Come on, y'all. Come on with right. me, y'all. Come on. Right. Let's love God. Let's fall in love with him. Let's keep his commandments. Amen. Stop saying you love God and prove it. Stop proving you love him. Why take a chance Why? to see if your little, I'm going to continue and sin plan is going to work? Why take a chance take and waiting to see if that's going to work out? Why take a chance and waiting to get saved later, when I get older, when I go do this, when I have time for it. Today, if you hear my voice, harden not your heart. If you hear God talking to you, if you hear God tugging at you, God doesn't do that for everybody. God is calling you. He's giving you an opportunity to be saved. How many will you get? How many more chances will you get? How many more gospel messages will you hear? How many more preachers will preach to you? How many more times, how many more days will God strive with you and not get any return on his investment? Tomorrow is not promised. Every sin you're dealing with, somebody has already defeated in their own life. Every spirit that you're warring with can be overcome. Why be bound when others are being set free? Man. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power. In the name Hallelujah. You can be saved. You can live holy. You can be separate from sin. You can write God a letter uh -huh. and tell him you love him. You can buy him a bouquet of flowers. You can make up your face and cry. You can shout it with the maximum decibels allowed by your voice, by your throat. God says, that's what you can do. But God says, if you love me, just keep my commandment. If you're a sinner today, fall in love with Jesus by becoming a servant. Man. I can tell you exactly what you got to do. The plan of salvation is real easy to comprehend and understand. Deuteronomy says, know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God. He is God. All right? The faithful God, yes. which keepeth covenant and mercy with everybody. Yeah. No, with them that love him, and in case you didn't know what I've been talking about for these last 30 minutes, and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. That's your kids, 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 kids. Can a sinner love God? My answer is, why sin? Why sin when you can get daily bread? Why sin when you can get eternal life? Why yes. sin when you can get angel protection? Yes. Why sin when you can get a provider? Why not serve a God like that? Amen. God is a father to the fatherless. He's a miracle worker. He's the prince of peace. He's a mighty counselor. He's a sanctifier. He's a burden bearer. Who wouldn't serve a God like that? Yes. Why serve sin? Yes. You get present, you get a very present help in the time of trouble. You get a healer, you get a shepherd, you get a leader, you get a guider, you get instruction, you get comfort, you get joy, you get peace, you get Jesus. Choose Jesus, choose life, and walk away from sin. In Matthew 15 and eight, it says, this people draw nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me and that and that's that that's exactly what you were saying amen uh people are they, it's easy people love to say oh i love god because it sounds good it it sounds good but the truth is if you love god you're going to obey god it's just it, faith and love are things that people think you can't measure but god in his wisdom knows how to measure it by your obedience and by your faith if i if i said this the other day off the time saying if i tell you that your house is on fire if you believe me there's going to be action it's the same thing with salvation if you believe it you're going to apply it you're going to live it it's just that simple yes well it, it's it's very simple God, Peter did it when he when he stood up on the day of Pentecost. He told him, he said, first thing you do is you repent. All that means is you 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 turn from sin, 
you realize that the Bible said godly sorrow worketh repentance. When you realize that what you've been doing is wrong and it's displeasing to God, it causes you to repent. You turn from sin. You turn from the things that uh, uh, turn you away or move you away from God. It says, and then be baptized. People think that the baptism now is not necessary. But according to the scripture, not according to what people think and their opinions, but what does God say? What does the Bible say? He said, repent and be baptized. And he didn't, he said, every one of you. That lets you know how important it is. That lets you know it's necessary. Because if it wasn't necessary, he wouldn't have said every one of you. He would have said those that want to. But he said, be baptized, every one of you. In the and he told you how to do it. Because once again, there, if there's a truth, then there's a there's a, a deception. If, if, so the truth says, in the name of the Lord Jesus, that's, that's the baptism you must be baptized with, according to the scripture. All through Acts, though Jesus, when he left, he gave the keys to the kingdom to Peter. And he said, he told Peter what to do. Everywhere in Acts, you see where those apostles and Peter baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. You cannot find anywhere in the scripture where anybody baptized in the name of the Father in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. No. Amen. You can't find it. You can't find it in the Scripture. But there is none. But you will find several examples where they baptize in the name of the Lord Jesus. So in, in, in all you're getting, get an understanding and understand what, what God wants. Amen. And then he wants you to live a life free from sin. People don't understand. Brother, when you said that, it, it just, it, it was like an explosion in my mind. When you said death means separation. And that's what happened when, when, when Adam and Eve sinned, we were looking for a, a natural death, but there was a separation. There was a death because they were put out of the, they were put out of the garden. So there was a death. Amen. So, uh, it's 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 in every sense uh they were put out of the garden man has been uh looking for something to satisfy that longing most of the time they don't even realize that uh the reason why they caught up in drugs all of these other scenes uh i don't care if it's lying or cheating or stealing or Whatever it is, the reason why is because there's no peace. When you got God, you don't have to see. When you have God, you know, there's no, you're not living for the flesh. You're living for the spirit. So that, that, that you don't have to have uh, 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 these vices and all of this other stuff to try to make your flesh feel satisfied. And we don't understand. Sin is death. The reason why folks are miserable, ready to commit suicide, uh, uh, walking away from their, their, their families, the reason why they, they strung out is because of sin. That's, that's what's killing them, sin. Sin is a monster. Oh my goodness. Amen. But God gave us, God gave us a remedy. Amen. Amen. He, he, he told us, amen, to live free from sin. And he said, this I say then, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the love of the flesh.